JSX, one of the most controversial React features which actually turned out to be an amazing tool to build UI interfaces. In this video, we'll take a closer look on how to work with it in detail and discuss some of the good practices you need to know in order to build reliable and reusable React components. This is the second part of a React.js tutorial designed to bring you up to speed with the library and its core features as quickly and as efficiently as possible. In the description down below, you'll find more videos from this series. Let's start with the main app component we've built in the first part of this tutorial. We are defining a tasks list as the component state and we are initializing it with an array containing two predefined objects. To display these two objects in the DOM, we are adding an unordered list in JSX. Each object in the state array will be mapped to a list entry. Note that for each list entry we are defining a key attribute and we are mapping this to the task ID field, which must be a unique value. The key property is used by React to track changes in the DOM and only perform updates when necessary. For now, let's just display the name and description for each task. I want to individually style each task based on its status. To achieve this, we'll use the class attribute. Please note that while the attribute name in HTML is class, we are using the attribute class name in JSX. This is because JSX is a mixture of HTML and JavaScript and the class keyword is reserved in JS. Also because of the JS constraint, Use camel case instead of dash notation for any attribute composed of two or more words. For example, an attribute called data-id in HTML should be defined as camel case data id in JSX. Notice that when defining the value of an attribute in JSX, any JavaScript expression can be declared between the brackets. In our case, we are calling the getTaskClassName function, which returns an appropriate class name string based on the status. I want to also touch on a slightly different topic here called rendering. As you probably know, React uses a virtual DOM, basically a tree structure of React elements which is a clone of the real DOM. Now, in React, the rendering process has a name somewhat misleading. This process actually consists of the library analyzing the virtual DOM and collecting the state, the props and the desired UI changes. Next, based on this information, React will perform the necessary updates in the virtual DOM in a process called reconciliation. Finally, once the virtual DOM is updated, the commit phase starts. This is where React actually applies the UI changes to the real DOM. Understand now that rendering in React might not actually result in a real DOM update since changes might not be detected in the reconciliation phase. Getting back to our code, you might have noticed that the getTaskClassName function is called two times for each entry. This is to be expected because we are using the strict mode in development which runs some bits of code twice in order to perform some checks and validations. Don't mind this too much since it will never happen in production. Let's take a quick look at adding inline styling for DOM elements. We'll use the style attribute for this. Notice the two brackets we are using here. The second bracket is needed because you can pass a JavaScript object as the style where each key of the object is the CSS rule and each object value is the CSS rule value. Of course, this is JavaScript code after all, so you could use things like the ternary operators if needed. It's time now to tackle conditional rendering and event handling. It's pretty common for you to display some elements in the page only if some condition is met. This is straightforward with JSX. You could use the ternary operator or the more straightforward AND operator to display the needed element. JSX elements are, after all, simple JavaScript objects. So note that you could use them in any JavaScript expression and even assign them to variables if you need to. Handling events in JSX is similar to handling events on DOM elements. You just need to pass an event handler function but notice that we are using camel case for the event names. Your event handlers will receive instances of synthetic event, a custom object wrapper offering the same interface as the browser's native event. Its purpose is to ensure consistent behavior regardless of the browser you are using. In our code, we added a listener to remove tasks from the list, and we are now adding a click listener which adds a new random task to the same list. The final thing I want to touch on is child components and passing props around. We need a quick way to move the task from one status to the next. Let's start by adding two buttons which are conditionally rendered based on the current task status. Of course, there are better ways to do this and avoid duplicating the button tag, but for the purpose of this example, this will do. You can see probably though that there are scenarios where such conditional rendering or complex logic might occur. Whenever a part of your code becomes too complex, it's always a good practice to extract it in a separate business unit. We'll do this by creating a new component called action button. Since a component function can return only one JSX element, we need to wrap our two conditional clauses in a React fragment. 
fragments let you group a list of children without adding extra nodes to the DOM. To perform the click action, we allow the parent component to pass in the exact logic via an on-click property. And finally, we'll work on a quick update function implementation which makes an update to the task status based on the previous one. Remember that in order for React to track a change, the state object reference needs to change. So changing the status value of an object in the array is not enough and changing the reference of only the object inside the array is also not enough. So the entire array reference needs to change. In our example, we are cloning the array using the spread operator and performing the updates on the newly created reference. This is not the most elegant way to solve this and I advise you to take a look at libraries such as the Immutability Helper for better solutions. This concludes our dive into JSX. Check out the description down below for more videos on the React topic and thank you for watching.